Hello, well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is Michael Gucci from Malta Block, and welcome to the Wax Meetup with Ivan Vandenberg. And today we have Ross, our co-host, and Ivan with us. Welcome, both. Morning, of you. everyone. It's uh, it's great to have all of you here today. Now, uh, all Thank of you. us know Ivan very well, but for those who are joining for the first time, Ivan, can you give us some background about yourself and tell us what you were doing before and how you came into the crypto space? Straight into it. Wow. Yeah. All right. We'll go through this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, engineer and, and software engineer in the earlier parts of my career, uh, worked at Intel, started a couple of apps, um, ran product for a mobile analytics, marketing, ad mediation business, and then uh, started building smart contracts, simple smart contract apps on Ethereum, kind of right as it was coming to fruition. Um, right before that nice 2017 bull run. And uh, yeah, ended up uh, kind of seeking out the different projects in the space that I believed in the the team, the vision, and, and, and you know, where I thought I could bring value in and ultimately ended up at Wax. And uh, now I run business development at Wax. And uh, yeah, just, you know, been trying to bring on IP partners and dApps and, you know, the likes uh, to the ecosystem for the last two plus years. Excellent. Now in the last, uh, was it last couple of couple of months? So we have had three successful launches, right? Even so the first one was the series one, then we had the exotic, and then we had the William Shatner. And each time the cards sold out quicker than the last time, right? So Shatner was the record. It was sold out in seven minutes. Now, Ross, I don't think you were awake when this happened, were you? No, I was definitely not awake. It's like 12 o'clock Perth time, two o'clock Sydney time. Um, but I managed to pick up myself a mega pack of Shatner cards on the secondary market. And, so, you know, because the market is, is still kind of trying to find its feet, you often can get like some really good deals. So I think I paid, I think it was like 700 wax for 30 cards, which I thought was not too bad, right? Because, you know, sometimes you, you have people that put it up there for like 30,000 wax, right? And it just sits there. But if you just cycle it all the way through, you might pick up a little stray. So um, I have never actually opened up a mega pack in my life before. I've bought cards um, and I've got a mega pack and I want to open it up online. I'll be like a newbie opening up packs. So uh, if we get get some time at the end of this uh, meetup, I'll just, we'll, you know, watch me fumble my way through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so even, how, how do you feel this, about the success? It's uh, exciting. Yeah, so I mean, it's been, it's definitely been exciting, right? I mean, all of this stuff has come to life really, really fast. And and I think success kind of builds on success and, and, and more and more deals are coming to our doorstep um, in a way that I like truthfully, if you asked me to, you know, beginning of this year, I, I would have never expected this kind of inbound. And so it's been nice. It's a good problem to have. Um, it, it's also like, you know, to be fair, it's, it actually is pretty time consuming and cumbersome in terms of wow, how do we actually get all this stuff out, right? I mean, you know, how do we scale up, uh, you know, our own team? Um, do we offload things? There's a lot of, you know, I think we're still in the, the phase of, all right, so if we've got 20 things we want to launch by the end of the year, or by whatever date, right, how do we get that done and how do we get it done effectively? And I, and I think that's something that we're really focused on is how do we scale out um, the builds, um, bringing in new teams to, to kind of help and, and partner up with that. I mean, kind of, Part of the beauty of, of being in a decentralized you know community is there's lots of teams i mean look at your both your teams right i mean they, they're guilds you know a lot of technically sound competent people in the space um that i think would be really really good at, at helping you know kind of work with ip partners and bring different products to the to the space uh, i will say one one thing you did the only thing you missed on your kind of introduction was just the blockchain heroes thing uh obviously over the weekend and, and that right. yes, yes. forgot about that one yeah yeah yeah, that one did extremely well, even though there was a you know a few <laughs> some serious hiccups um, uh, around that one, but it still sold out. I mean, and I don't know, Joel and Travis can correct me, but I think it was like twenty minutes or something like that. So you know, combined maybe twenty five minutes. So it, it's been it's been interesting to see the demand, right? It, it's it's pretty incredible. Um, you know, it's it's certainly if I was an IP holder, I mean, this would be something where I'd be. I'd be more than watching, and I think they're they are more than watching now. I mean, most of the people who have you know large IP that they license out or that they partner with, um, you know, different platforms with, 
they're they're more than starting to take notice, right? They're they're starting to take action, and I think we're mm. doing a very good job of kind of aggregating that and, and getting the right people to to this platform. Yeah, I think I missed blockchain heroes because I didn't buy. You know, usually when I when I'm waiting and buying, I it, I remember it in my mind. So somehow I missed the 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 release time for this blockchain heroes, and it was sold out. So it's my mind. Yeah, I, I know, but their art is good. I looked at some of their uh, NFTs. Yeah. Uh, all the special effects, especially this. They did yeah. one for this, uh, this uh, what is it? The Adam with the, the button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the atomic or uh, the atom bomb. What was the, the one they called it? Something different. Uh, atom atomic Adam with uh, he's pressing the button and going up as a blockchain hero, right? It was it was nice. I think they did some good, good job there. Yeah, they actually partnered with Tops on that one. So it was nice to, to start seeing some cross-pollination between IP partners. I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Um, I know the guys who are launching COGS, uh, Ben Fairbank and, and Ark Lager and the whole Red Fox team, uh, you know, the way they've designed their their NFTs is really kind of, uh, it's very, very perfect for, for, I guess, extending into different IPs, right? It's almost like a blank canvas, right? You could put almost anything on a POG in the, or COG in their case. So yeah, I, I, I think it's cool. I think it's great to see like, you know, big name brands coming into the space, finding so much interest in it that they're actually like, hey, why don't we partner with these guys? Why don't we extend this to this offering? And, I, you know, it's great for developers too, right? Like what a cool thing to be able to do, right? Like to partner with Tops on something you created two months ago, right? And, and now all of a sudden you're getting to do deals with, you know, companies that probably otherwise wouldn't have paid attention, right? And, and, and that's not a knock on, on the developers, it's just simply, um, you know, the nature of, of how this business has worked. So, you know, the whole the whole way that NFTs tied to digital playing card assets was something that I never actually thought of. I mean, where I come from, I've never really been into, um, into collecting cards. I always thought that NFTs, NFTs would be tied to real world assets. Um, and you know that's obviously something that uh, there's a few challenges about you know providence of you know if the if the asset actually exists there in the warehouse how do you ensure that um and i know when i first spoke to malcolm you know over a year ago right it was always um, we were always talking about like sneakers and uh, you know uh, other merchandise physically held in, in the factory and we seem to kind of have deviated a little bit away from that now yeah, what do you thought? What are your thoughts on that? Do you, do, you, do you see us going back to okay? There's we're going to really go back to that physical assets thing, or do you think digital assets are the way of the future? Sharing RP, uh, you know, sharing playing cards, artwork, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, 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 what's the right way to put this? So I really like the crossover, right? Like we'll call them synthetics, whatever you want to call them, virals. I mean, we we we've done yeah. a bunch of space, right? I think you know there's some really big issues to solve in that in that space, right? Like it's one thing to have the idea and to want to go do that. It's another thing to have the supply chain, the logistics, the warehousing, all the kind of core components that come around with that. Now, that being said, I think there's ways to partner with companies who have a great you know distribution uh, network and have awesome you know warehousing, logistics, packing, kitting, all those sorts of things. And, and I think the way to get to that fastest is really through leveraging an existing businesses, like we'll call it distribution, right? Um, so I know like I'm working on things right now that probably tie more into that Ross than, than, um, than one would think. Uh, I still think, you know, there's something just really simple and beautiful about purely digital concepts. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, look, it's a dream for any IP holder. It's a dream to not have to go manufacture a toy and do all these things. And people are still happy with the outcome. Right. Um, <laughs> Hardware is hard, right? And, and, and physical products are difficult. I mean, you know, I was just talking to a huge toy company the other day, and they're talking about lead times, right? And they're like, "Well, what's the lead time on a project like, you know, doing this set of digital collectible?" We're like, "Well, I don't know. I mean, if you have all the assets and, and everything else, let's let's just call it, you know, two months to be safe." And they're like, "Wow. Um, well, for us, if we we're going to get a toy to market, it takes us at least eighteen months, typically closer to twenty-four." So that's huge time, and then you've got to get, you know, who knows if it's a success or not either, right? I mean, it's a lot of cost, whereas digital, you can really iterate quickly. And so I think to answer your question succinctly, I think there's going to be, it's going to be a lot of digital, and then you're going to start seeing a blend of digital and physical, um, where you leverage existing distribution channels that are already working and up and running. And this is just a way of unlocking those capabilities in a, in a new way. 
Mm. Excellent. So let's go through some of these uh, questions, uh, Aaron. Yeah. So the first question is from uh, Anders. So he says, when is the NFT of the dog? I don't even know if he's referring to my dog, but we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> put a little cameo here. <laughs> this little pup, uh, we can make a nice NFT of her anytime for you, Anders. All right, so you just let me know, and Sandy and I will have a photo shoot, and we'll send you an NFT, all right? With the <laughs> animation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where my dogs are this morning. They're playing with Shelly somewhere, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if, if he's particularly asking about something. I, I assume he's just joking with me and, and asking about my dog. <laughs> so the uh, second crypto community <laughs> members and their dogs. <laughs> Everybody bring their dog or make an NFT out of it. <laughs> Absolutely. So the second question is from Ronin Deck from Twitter. Uh, what are the long-term plans for IPs to entice people to stay invested in them? Any plans for award cards or other incentives to encourage trading? So, okay, so let's just repeat that question real quick. So what are the long-term plans from the IT, IP holders perspective to keep people interested and enticed in their, their brand lines or their IP? I think that's what he's saying. Yes. This is a general high-level question. It seemed like there was, let me just look at the, I think there's text here. Um, any plans for award cards or other incentives to encourage trading? So, yeah, I think, you know, generally, generally all the IP holders, they're, they're not looking at it as a one time, like, Hey, we're just going to release this. And that, that's great. We made a little bit of money and we're walking away from the table. Like I haven't met one of our IP partners that's thought that way. I think all of them want to keep people engaged. I mean, everything, everybody from tops to, you know, blockchain heroes on the other end of the spectrum, right? Where they're, they're kind of a unique um, you know, kind of made their own IP and all that. All of them, I, I think, have huge plans for the future. And I think this is just really like phase one. I mean, almost like try, like testing period, right? And so I think there's tons of new releases that are going to come out. I think the collectability of some of these older sets, whether people, you know, right now it's 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 probably harder to tell. And like people, you know, this happens in trading cards and, and everything else, right? Is like. The top series one stuff like that's going to be really rare stuff uh, pretty shortly here, right? As more people enter the space, more people want a card at the very least or some cards. Like those things are going to become more and more in demand, and like people yeah. forget that a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred thousand cards is really nothing in the scheme of things. So that's a really small amount of cards. Um, so I think there's there's that component where like from their perspective, this is a long term play, right? Like the, once they're in, like the greatest part about this business is once somebody does a launch and it sells out in twenty minutes they want to stay and play ball, right? They reinvest in this in this kind of concept and they want to stay around to, to keep this whole thing alive. And that's great. Um, I think getting back into like the nuances of how they do that, I think you're going to see a lot of different mechanics, right? Award cards, sure. That's like, to me, that's low hanging fruit. I think there's more interesting stuff that they can, they can really incorporate with, uh, you know, you could do different kind of burn mechanics and, and probably the right terms crafting, right? If you, if you look at like, you know, video games and things of that nature, I think we did a little bit of that with shards on Shatner um, yeah, I actually really liked that, right? Like taking my like bias out of the whole yeah. situation, like looking at different things. I didn't know how that was going to work, right? I didn't know if that was going to be something people enjoyed or didn't enjoy. And, and you know, just from a personal perspective, I, I really liked, I found myself buying and selling a, a ton more when there were shards. Like I just constantly was like, oh, I need that piece. So like, let me go find that piece. And then you get this yeah. new card and all of a sudden it's like this, it's kind of this gamified, I don't know, you get multiple pack openings, it's kind of the same joy um in that collection so i think that that's an interesting mechanic again i think there's a lot of like untapped very interesting mechanics to keep things interesting um award cards is is like a no-brainer run-in um that that seems like everybody's willing to do that um especially in the digital space and then again i think you know to to kind of tie this back to what we just spoke about with ross's previous question is the physical stuff too right like hey on top of the fact that you got this gold card, like, hey, how about we give a hundred, you know, physical cards of atom bombs from Series One to people in the in the you know community or whatever it may be? Um, and I think, as a company, as a way of increasing trading and wanting to really promote trading in a meaningful way, you know, we're definitely evaluating some different tokenomic stuff that we've we've kind of talked about briefly, and I think. There will be a lot more coming out soon here about that, but there's going to be mechanics built into that where there isn't a benefit to trading for the entire ecosystem. 
I like the idea of being able to play with the cards as well. Like if, for instance, if we had sure. Magic the Gathering on here, you know, we'd be able to actually play, get, you know, play in tournaments and that kind of stuff. That, that's really cool. Um, I, I read something, and I, I'm not sure which, I think it was one of the Ethereum collectibles where you could join cards together to make more powerful cards. Um, I yeah. actually just saw it on Twitter. I was going through it, and it was like, oh, that looked interesting, and I can't recall uh, where it was tied to. Uh, there's, I've seen a couple examples of that, and that kind of comes back to this concept of like melting, crafting, you know, just depends on the game, right? Mm. Kind of, you almost like, you build up a bunch of base cards in order to get a premium card, right? And that's kind of another way of getting new new cards and a reason to collect. So again, you probably hit on one of the bigger core components I didn't even mention, Ross, which is like gameplay, right? Like that to me is like a quintessential, like, of course, if I'm having fun playing a game, I'm more than happy to like want to collect the things that make me feel better about playing that game, right? That I enjoy the aesthetics that I want, right? The same thing that drives, you know, skin buying on Fortnite or, or any of that, right? It's very applicable to um, all sorts of different games that could, could come out of NFTs. Cool. Let's go to the next question. So it's from Zorik. Can artists get technical assistance from Wax Team? Specifically, I want to know if I can convert my natural art into NFT images with animation, etc. So I think it looks like he's an artist and wants to know what type of technical help he can get from the Wax Team if he wants to do digitization. Yeah, so I mean, from the wax, I don't even think you really need the wax team, right? Like, you you could certainly reach out if it's a big enough like concept. I would say the wax team is insanely, <laughs> insanely resource like constrained is probably not the right word, but just we've got a ton like just booked, booked, booked. So like in terms of one off things, like hey, I want to sell my art, like that's not something you need to to come to us. Like we we hope the system's a lot easier than that, right? I think especially if you want to take. And I, and I guess I, maybe I'm being a little bit ignorant and I don't really know what natural art means. I'm assuming that's something they painted or they created in real life, maybe some photography. You know, art takes so many forms. I, like, I don't know exactly what this question is. Yes, maybe it's something to be digitized either by its model. Say, say that again, Mike? No, I thought maybe something to do with nature or natural. And maybe something like that, yes. Uh, yeah, so I mean, as long as it can be put into a format that can be uploaded to IPFS and, and created into an NFT, I mean, I'd highly recommend going to the Atomic Assets website. I think there's a few others for NFT creation. Um, it's pretty simple. I mean, as simple as, you know, uploading an image, giving it a name, a description. You can even stake wax, or stake's probably the wrong word, but you can back it with wax tokens so that it has like an inherent value. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do. So I guess to answer that question, like my my hope is that it's far simpler than even needing to contact Wax. Um, you know, our community is incredibly helpful too. But I would go to if it's simply making NFT, I just go check out you know Atomic Hub and, and their NFT creator system. It's very simple and easy to use, and um, I've seen you know a lot of people create stuff there, uh, art or otherwise. Yes, yes, I tried. The, That's I the go to place. and it was quite easy. It took me like less than five minutes to create one. Yeah. And that, that that's the go-to place, Mike. I mean, I know that you said that you were going to um, potentially walk through creating an NFT. You were going to do it on the Atomic Hub? Uh, Atomic Hub, yes. So it's it's just uh, it's very easy. You just upload the image and then that's it. Then you have it on. But the, the problem is it won't show up on Blocks because I think Blocks is not yet supporting the Atomic Assets. But there is other Wax Explorer that you can use to see. See the yeah. but I'm, I'm sure Syed will fix it soon. <laughs> I, I think that's something that I found, uh, in, uh, like I mentioned earlier, a bit of a newbie when it comes to even card collectibles. The numerous markets that you've got to go into to find how to open up the pack that you've purchased and view your cards. So I suppose it'll just get better as, as, as time goes on, right? Yes. Yeah, I think, yeah I think the marketplaces are evolving quickly. I mean, just even watching the last couple of months, I mean, they're just so much better than they were yeah. the day we left Series 1, right? I mean, it's truly like night and day difference. Um, and then there's there's places like Wax Floor where you can actually look for the prices, best price across all the marketplaces, and you can go find that card. Again, that's probably worth a tutorial. Like, that's probably something that we should take a look at and be like, well, hey, how do I know that I'm getting a good deal on a card? Well. Go to this site, check it out, see all the marketplaces, and you can literally click in and make a purchase right there. So, um, you know, a lot of that that's already kind of built in, and I'm sure it's 
only going to get better. Uh, I know the guys behind most of those teams, and they're impressive people. I mean, you guys know Sayed, and, and, and he's incredibly bright. Um, so, uh, yeah, I only, I only envision them getting better and better. That's cool. the next question. It's uh, oh, the questions are ticking up. Hey, Mark, we've got twelve. Is it Barzar Furies from Twitter? When will the new cloud wallet be released? When will the new tokenomics announced? Will Wax try to diversify not only NFTs and games? How and what directions? And what about trading? Wow, a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so when will the new Wax Cloud Wallet be released? Great question. Um, I know that it was heavily under development for a long period of time. Um, it's not far off. Uh, I think, you know, certainly the team has acknowledged that that's a huge upgrade that that's definitely necessary to make. I don't like giving timelines. I think that it's being prioritized now. I think it's been, you know, just to give everybody an understanding of why that wasn't done three months ago is look what's happened in the last three months. Like the whole team's had to kind of like reshift and be like, all right, well, do we want to lose these one-time opportunities or at least seemingly one-time opportunities to launch IP? And the answer was no. I think now we're getting to a point where like, wow, okay, we've, we've proven out that this thing works, right? Like this stuff works. Now, how do we make it better for everything coming forward? And clearly one of the easy answers is making the Wax Cloud wallet, um, you know, match up with the design and functionality that we've kind of, you know, teased out there. And, and, and that certainly is coming. Second question is when will new tokenomics be announced? Again, I don't I don't put timelines on things because I don't control that. Um, I would guess in the next couple of weeks at the latest, um, the announcement. Um, I think that's a really interesting one to keep your your eye on um, or ear to, whatever you want to call it. But so that, even, is this the new tokenomics? It's about giving back some of the trading fees. Is that is that the, there's multiple. The there's multiple ways that it's it's advantageous, right? I think we've we've looked at it both from a burn and from a token distribution um, kind of reward system. So I think it's going to be a multifaceted kind of tokenomics upgrade that really shouldn't impact the end user, but um, you know should just be a much better experience for token holders and seeing the benefit of actual large volumes of trading. Uh, and then lastly, it says, will Wax try to diversify not only NFT and games, how um, and what are the directions? Uh, I mean, the answer is definitely, I mean, we'd, we'd love to. I think, you know, when you're running a business like this that's growing rapidly and it's going in multiple directions, right, you have to remain focused. And I think, you know, trying to corner the NFT and gaming market is a huge task in and of itself, right? you don't just want to become this platform for everything off the bat, right? Like, I think we found a really good vertical that we can go just completely dominate. And that's really my, my, my belief is like, don't, don't try to boil the ocean, right? Like, do we want to get into other things? Absolutely. But is wax going to turn into, you know, a, I don't know what, the, <laughs> what a good example. Just calm enough. <laughs> yeah, you, you see, like, it's like you, you have options, right? And those options are try to do a little bit of everything. And, you know, it's like an inch an inch deep and a mile wide, or, or you really kind of narrow, narrow in on what's working, right? And I think we've found what's working. And I think that's pretty hard to disagree with at this point. Um, and doing that in, the, in a better way, right? Like, I don't even think we've scratched the surface of the potential of that NFT and gaming market even, not even scratch, right? And so... The fact that we're in this position and things are going this well now, there's tons of ro room for improvement, lots of different iterations and ev evolutions that are going to happen there. I think the natural progression from that is going to be, you know, there's there's lots of different directions. I won't even I won't even take a pick because frankly, right now, the, my focus is on entertainment, IP, gaming, um, and you know, really improving kind of the tokenomics and, and fundamental kind of ecosystem around Wax. Let's go to the next one. It's from Zoba. Are there any plans to get IP from Disney movies like Frozen and Lion King? What type of IP is needed for NFTs? Can you explain the process? Do you contact Disney and offer them technical help? I think he's trying to understand how it works and whether there is any chance of getting IP from movies. I think that's a good uh, good idea, right? There are like many hit movies all, all around. 
Yeah, so I mean, I can just answer bluntly that like we're pursuing, actively pursuing massive IP from movies, TV shows, things that everyone on this call has heard of. Um, how that process goes down, it's really kind of a combination of multiple things. Um, partner recommendations is a great one. You know, somebody's like, "Hey, why don't you uh, talk to my buddy at so and so?" When you know they're doing something different than we are, but we think they could, you know, take advantage of it. Most of it, I would say, has been you know me and my my team kind of doing outreach and, and working on these things for you know it's not like this stuff happens overnight, right? I mean, I'm trying to like use different examples without names, but I mean it's a six it's a three to six month process to get like a really big IP brand to go do something on blockchain and and getting comfortable with it. Um, it, it seems like the sales cycle, if you want to call it sales, but like the partnership cycle is is shortening um, as we have more and more kind of like frameworks and, and whatnot to, to, to kind of put out there. And it's a lot easier when you have a handful of success stories too, right? Uh, we can point to like, hey, this is why I can say that this could be, you know, this big of a revenue opportunity. Um, so in, in short, I guess, yeah, there's no like secret answer how does this deal get done I, I think licensing is one thing i think it's kind of like a three-pronged approach you're either going to be a partner with the business you're going to license it which really is just taking a they're getting a royalty fee um and then you purchase the license either through an, a minimum guarantee plus royalties um i don't know there's 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 a lot we could jump into with licensing around blockchain i'd be happy to do that at a different time um but long long story short is we are very very far into conversations with a lot of entertainment based ip the next one, Ben Ma Ben Madison. Is there any talk talking of mobile-based NFT games? Say that one more time. Mo mobile. I think he's talking about NFT games on phone, like Android and iPhone. I oh, 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 oh. Uh, mobile-based NFT games. So I think that's got to come. Um, it's not like necessarily something that I have like a mobile app ready to go that I'm, you know, sneaking out here. I think we've got a lot of partners who are interested in doing things in the mobile space. The app stores are a bit tricky depending on what you want to do um, around blockchain and NFT is certainly the app store is, is a little bit. Uh, I know we've recently funded uh, mobile development on a wax based kind of NFT wallet and it, it ping, pings APIs and has pricing information for all of your NFTs. I think the bigger thing there is like just being able to have it on your phone is such a big advantage for sharing with friends. I mean, peer-to-peer, -peer, word of mouth stuff is is powerful, right? And in the numbers we're talking about, um, you know, with active traders, I mean, if you bring in a thousand new people based on social sharing and you know word of mouth type of references, I mean, that's a huge deal, right? I mean, that can really move markets uh, at this stage, which is crazy, but it's the truth and. So I think that's more important to me than necessarily like native mobile games, but it's it's inevitable that that stuff's coming, guys. That's no question. So the next one is from Matthew. Uh, I have BC Heroes Genesis cards for more. Should I buy one? Absolutely, you should buy one. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. That was an easy oh. question. <laughs> yeah, go buy one. Uh, again, like like I said, it's. People in general, right? I mean, like collecting and investing is, is like a longer term game, right? I think people, they're like, oh, well, people are signing for this right now. And it's like, yeah, sure. But what if Blockchain Heroes has 10 more launches and this was the smallest of the 10 and people still covet those first series ones? Maybe it's an incredible investment or that's probably the wrong word to use, but an incredible collection. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I personally, I'm one of those people who, just goes in and grabs them up and, and just sits on them because, you know, I'll be around for a while and, and I'd like to see where these things go. And I have a lot of belief in that particular team and that organization about getting more content out there. Next one, is OpenSea working on a VAX integration or is it just a rumor? Yeah. Um, hmm. <laughs> I, I would love to see it happen. Um, we've certainly... We certainly have a dialogue going. Um, I think it'll happen sooner rather than later, but here's my kind of pitch is why the hell would you not want to do a deal with us at this point? And then if you're trading NFTs, like, dude, why would you not want to do a deal with, with like, what other deal would you do that would make more sense? I guess is my question for, for, for a marketplace on Ethereum. 
your gas fees, I mean, can get up to, I was looking at some the other days, like 750 to send an item. We're talking about free transactions. We have NFT launches that are massive and people are to be more and more open to doing the entire sales on secondary markets. And we have a huge audience of users that trade all the time. So to me, like it seems like a no brainer, but again, you know, uh, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Absolutely. So the next one, any plans on launching audio NFTs to celebrate famous vocalists? How does that work, audio NFTs? Well, I mean, it, it works the same way that, you know, right now, right, the form factor just tends to be PNGs. Uh, and that just tends to be what it is. Or, you know, JPEGs, for instance. Uh, there's no reason that you can't do that at all. Um, absolutely zero reason. Absolutely. That you can't do that. So I've been pitched that idea so many times recently. I'm honestly getting to a point where I'm like, well, somebody just needs to do it. Like, I, like I, to me, it's like, if you, you, again, content drives these things. Like, if you have, like, a dog barking, like, no one's going to give a shit about that, right? Like, that's just fundamentally the truth. But, uh I, yeah, I, I think it's so inevitable, like even with our stuff, like I, I know with even upcoming IP releases, part of it is sound is involved, right? Like there will be an effect, like at least like a, you know, and part of like the rare cards is going to be audio and video type stuff, right? With tops and even with blockchain heroes, you've already got other mediums, right? That are, that are being brought in, which are like gifts and videos and things of that nature. So audio is actually shocking to me that that hasn't been done yet. Um, at least not super actively. I know, uh, Michael um, from Mblue and uh, Uplift Nation, they did a, the first music video that I'd seen on Wax, um, which is kind of a cool concept. And, and that's a really nice project that they're working on there. Um, again, I, that I guess, so I guess I take my words back. Somebody has done it. Um, I guess on a mass scale is what I'm referring to is like, go get like, you know, a K-pop artist would be awesome. And we could do, you know, like previews of different you know, upcoming music for their fans that are rabid fans. Um, you know, just trying to give you guys ideas, get out there and do it. Um, I have no reason why you can't. Next one. Soon gameplay will be available through Cox. What do you think of smart NFTs? Smart NFTs. What is smart NFTs? I'm going to try to read it really quick. Just make sure. Is it something to be be available through COGS? What do you think of smart NFTs? Okay, I, I get the question now. Um, yeah, so COGS is cool. Uh, the The concept there, right, is you're taking the exact game that I grew up playing. It was a really big thing in, in the US at the very least. Um, but the concept is you stack these chips, they're almost like poker chips, and then you have a heavier one called a slammer, you throw it down, and then however many are heads up or down um, is basically the winner. Uh, so they actually built the game mechanic okay. into the uh the system so you'll be able to play against your friends with your nfts which is like certainly uh a step in the right direction i think they're doing yeah. a lot of cool stuff there i mean like the gameplay mechanic is simple don't get me wrong it's almost like from what i can tell and what i've seen is it's almost like kicking a field goal in madden or a free kick in in fifa uh you know where there's kind of like a variation depending on the quality of the player and their skill set and it gets either more difficult or, or easier. But um, if you're really talented, you could you know beat somebody with a, a you know conceivably better card. Um, so, but to answer the smart NFT thing, yeah. So right now, I'll just give you my opinion. Right, is is like NFT today. It's, to make an analogy, it's really primarily if we we put it into physical terms, it's like me mailing you a picture. Right. I mean, that's like largely what NFTs today are in my terms of like that's how rudimentary some of the stuff is today compared to what i think there will be in three years from now yeah. um I, I really do believe that we'll look back on this and be like wow that was really cool but like wow how do we not do all this i think there's ways to link into like oracles like chain link and get a lot of you know and, and even other it doesn't have to necessarily be chain link be all sorts of things and gameplay upgrades of your nfts and training your your characters and doing all these really cool things and then being able to turn around and sell it on a secondary market i mean that that type of stuff is no brainer i think there's even 10 layers deeper than that that, that are possible um so uh, i do think the future's bright for nfts I, I really do so next one is mike i think this is we just answered but there is one more here what's the next in the pipeline so anything new you want to share with us Evan? Hot off the press. 
Hot off the press. Um, hmm. What can I share? I mean, we got the COGS launch coming up on the 18th. That's not necessarily a completely new story. And there's a series, right? Is, series two? Uh, series two, yeah. So I think series two is far. No, it's not super far. I think it's like, uh, I'm thinking early September. Um, I, I think, and uh, I know with series two, they're doing a lot more, uh, tops that is in terms of like the cards. And I think taking a like whole new approach with, with some of it and trying to like really up their game on, a, on series two, making more original content, um, uh, different rarity structures, different effects. I think you might see sound and other things. That's definitely gonna be a big, uh, I think a pretty big improvement um, on those, uh, those assets. Um, and then I think, you know, I know there's a few things coming up that I'm working on. I can't really announce anything yet. I will say that there is one that's just really, really cool that everyone, I think worldwide, it's, it's a pretty big sensation and, and we're doing a really cool concept with it. Uh, it's not just going to be a, a card like trading card, for instance, it'll be something different, um, but very collectible and very in line with kind of encapsulating that IP. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I imagine we'll be able to announce that sometime this month. Um, so that's coming up and then working on some interesting deals, but nothing that I can announce right now. Exciting. So let's, let's, next one is the end goal for Wax, totally decentralized marketplace as per Ross, Ubrick's Silk Road vision. End goal for Wax, a totally decentralized marketplace. Is that the end goal? I'm not sure. Well, probably don't want to call it Silk Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, be careful yeah. what you say. I think they're listening to you right now. <laughs> yeah, no. I, <laughs> one free, free Roth Ulbricht already. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't get the question entirely, but is the goal of Wax to become a decentralized market? I, Wax personally, no. I think Wax is really focused on being, you know, the best and, and fastest and, and and you know most user friendly ecosystem for other people to build marketplaces on, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's not our game. Isn't going to want to be the the marketplace in town and everyone comes to us, right? That kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah, and it's a digital marketplace, right? So it's not like another eBay or a Gumtree or a Craigslist type thing. It's more like you know totally. tra trading digital assets that they got their own markets around them as well, right? Yeah, I think I mean we're just seeing more and more marketplaces spin up. I mean I think you know especially as more and more IP. Like I would really like to get to a level in the next let's call it six months where we can really do like a cool IP drop every single week, right? And it'll be new stuff. It won't just be like the same company we're doing week mm -hmm. after week. Like we'll be plotting these things out and. Ultimately, that may get into like interweek, you know, constantly getting stuff out the door. I think it's not just NFTs though, right? It can't just be trading cards for forever, right? Like, I think that's a great starting point. I think it's always going to be a, you know, subset of what we do. But I think we're already starting to see with like COGS and some of the other stuff I'm working on right now, like it's really starting to blend into uh, into different areas. And I saw Hotel God, if you're familiar with that project and Alien Worlds that are coming to our platform. They're doing some yeah, really, yeah. really cool stuff where you can see this is evolving, right? It's no longer just like buying a you know very simple game mechanic and, and trying to apply something to it. Like I was playing, no, I wasn't playing. I was watching uh, Dante play Hodel God the other day, and I was just like, dude, this is this is new. This is real new for blockchain. Uh, they've got like a, I think it's like up to fifty people on a map, uh, PvP, PV computer. Um, Battle Royale, but all the assets and skins are NFTs, and you can like earn different things by winning tournaments. And I was just like, this is great. Like, I am so happy to see things starting to move in, in both directions, right? Where you have a purely collectible path, which is always going to be valuable and huge for trading. But I think there's a game path if you do it right, that's really valuable and important as well. And I, I just am really happy to see the quality of games I'm seeing that are going to be out in the next three to, I don't know, we'll call it two to four months. Like they're like fun, like genuinely. Let's take blockchain out of the equation. They would be fun games to play. Mm. So I, I think that's going to be exciting. Okay, so the last one, 
Thanks for your time. Any thoughts on launching in-game in-game NFTs? Any I think I already answered it, but uh, again, it's it's less about what Wax wants to do, right? Like, like me as as Evan, like I'm not building a game. So what I can only do is I can tell people who are building games that the greatest thing you could possibly do if you have in-game items is make them NFTs. Because frankly, like if you ask me personally, I don't think there's any reason to build a game on blockchain if it doesn't have an NFT component. Like that just doesn't make any sense to me or, or at least a tokenized concept, right? Like there's what gain do you get from blockchain building a building on blockchain for, you know, we'll call it a triple A game that has no skins that can be traded on a secondary market and no token, you know, economic you know model behind it. There's none, right? It's just a more, it's a more costly, a bit, bit less efficient database at the end of the day with, with some of those things, if you're not using it correctly, like there's incredibly powerful business models that can adopt um, and, and grow out of this. And I think that's, that's the interesting thing to me. It's less about, I don't know, I guess, I guess I'm just going on just had a conversation today and somebody's like, Oh, I just want to build a game on blockchain. I'm like, dude, don't, don't do that. Uh, there's no, no reason. Like if you just want to build a fun game, build it on whatever you want. But if you want, and they're like, oh, I don't want skins. I don't want in-game currency. I'm like, well, what, what do you want? They're like, well, we can put the results on chain. I'm like, sure, maybe. Uh, people play Call of Duty all day, every day, and don't seem to be super concerned about the authenticity of the scores, right? Maybe gambling, things of that nature, it's, it's more interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when is the Shatner draw? I think he means our uh, giveaway. So I think we're almost... Well, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a giveaway, and I want to open up a pack. I just because yeah. I've never opened a pack, so uh, wow. might as well do, do, it. do it in front of every. I'm, I'm bored. I'm bored a pack. Want, okay. What do you want to do? You want to do the opening pack first or the giveaway first? No, why don't you um, go ahead and do the opening first? I will yeah. go ahead and put all these names in that uh, in that wheel. So let me give the screen to you, Ross. Okay, let's see if I can share this. So Ooh, I'll, do a, I'll follow Ross up with another pack opening too. I'll do a BC here or a B, uh, BCH, a Blockchain Heroes pack. I'll do a Titan pack. If I get any uh, rare cards, I'll give them away to somebody on the, the chat. Perfect. So let me make you who's I'm going to make your screen bigger, Ross. So yeah, there we go. That's I'm big. And then I can just say share screen. Yes. And there we go. Screen two. Okay. No, I'm, going cool. to, I'm going to be putting all these names in that. Uh, wheel so let me make sure i got all the names okay so so we got matt are you can you see my screen have i shared it uh i'm not seeing yet did you share it hmm or well, maybe it's on this corner screen so let me let's see oh i can see oh. it yeah uh, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Let me make right. you a bigger. So, yeah, no, so I, I missed the 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning um, market when they first launched. So I went and bought my Shatna cards off GPK market. And the, I think it was GPK market. Was it here? And the PAX. Was it here? Oh, no, it was on the Shatna marketplace. Right. Anyhow, the, the point being is that I got it after the fact, right? Now, in order to open it, you don't open it in the normal, um, like, uh, front ends and GPK or anywhere. You have to come to Shatner Cards IO. And if I go under my inventory, you can see I've got this 30 collectible cards pack here. So I'm in the right place, hey, Evan. This is where I open it. Yeah, yeah. My, I know. So, okay, I click on it. Uh, please confirm that you want to open the cards. Open. And what does that mean? Is that a good question? I have no idea. Do a. Uh, oh, right. right there. Anyway, I think it was just sending the transaction. Opening my pack. All right. So this is where we go. Like, woo, okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's so <laughs> cool. Okay. So they're all shards you get, and then afterwards, if you get a complete card, you can combine them, and then it gets it doesn't. Uh, you'll you'll figure out the rarity at that point. Ah, so, see, it's a good thing you have because I wouldn't know what I was doing at the beginning there. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, what are the chances of getting a complete card? Reasonably high. Um, I don't know. Every time I open one, I seem to be able to combine them, but we'll see. Um, if not, I can try to send you some shards so you can combine a card, but go to inventory. 
Oh, there you cool, go. There you go. Um, and so you see where this kind of like breeds trading, right? Is like you want to complete other cards. You have three that you can can do, but yeah, go ahead and click and combine one. I suppose this is the right time to say that I've actually logged in with my my Wax wallet, my cloud wallet. Good, good. Uh, that's why I'm able to do all of this. So combine jeepers it's so it's so slick hey that's very cool what, what is it like <laughs> oh no oh there keep going like what do i have to do something there oh, there we go okay oh you got a basic one let's do uh let's combine another how, card wait how do i know that it's a basic one uh it doesn't have any effect on it oh uh, okay there's uh yeah, we got click to combine deep thoughts. Combine now. So every every uh, um, action I push here gets pushed through the Wax Cloud Wallet onto the the Wax Protocol Network chain. Is that a good one? No? Also a basic one. Oh, but look how it's three D. That is so cool. <laughs> um, we got one more. Big money, big money, big money here, guys. <laughs> so you've got three full cards, Ross. That's that's good. That's, that's a good deal for you. That's good, I guess. Yeah. Oh, it's also a normal one. Oh man, no such <laughs> luck. Well, that is the uh, the concept, um, and then you can just fill out like you have some that are pretty close to full, so you can go and actually look up the shards on like one of the marketplaces. They actually have them labeled. Uh, you can find the exact one you're looking for, and then just purchase that one, so you get another card, and you get to re-enter the, the the competition. And then that gives you uh, you are entered into a draw, I believe, with those. If I am not mistaken, somebody will correct me. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so ultimately we're going to give a uh, 100 uh, signed, uh, autographed uh, William Shatner memorabilia and ship them to people. So if I just go, so I, I, I can see like, okay, I'm looking for this one. If I go through to shop or do I go, uh, trade? No, I think you have to go to collectibles. I, I don't know if you can buy from... Oh, yeah, you got to go to shop. I got to shop. There, yeah. If you click shop one more time, uh, up there is the marketplaces. I would go to the one in the middle, at least that's the one I know I've used before to buy shards. And then you go to Shatner packs per, or Shatner cards, what you're going to be looking for. Easy, that's it. Uh, all completed. Oh, uh, yeah, you got shard. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, this is very cool. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so you're going here in, and in here, pieces. I can complete them. So if I just go back to my my inventory, uh, your card shards, and for instance, I look at the one here with some on the is that a microphone there? So if I just go back here, and I have got the the middle yeah, one, the, the on number the of them. Uh, it's got like a number oh. and a. There's like a one, two, and three, or zero, one, two, three. Oh man, I can't see. Um, Neither can I. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Oh wait, it says get missing shards. Is that going to automatically uh, link? Oh, it? Probably. Try that. Oh yeah, there we go. Yes. Okay, so you can automatically link. So I need the bottom and the top. So there we go. I'll take the top. Sixty-five cents. I'm good. I should probably be shopping around for a better price, right? <laughs> Well, you might have made somebody happy. Um, yeah, it does. For the for the point of this exercise, I think we're good. Okay, so I got that, and I need the bottom one now. Yeah, uh, you can apparently, see, yeah. is that the bottom? Yeah, yeah, there's the bottom. See, you can see there. There's uh, two different prices. So I'll go for the slightly cheaper one. <laughs> So maybe you'll end up with something like X-ray card or something, which is more valuable than what you pay. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, do I just refresh or something? Ah, uh, um, yeah. This I remember being a little bit tricky and not perfect. Um, I'll just go back and then back and just see. Because I trust it automatic. Oh, there we go. Click to combine. So you just I went back to another screen and then back in again, and there we go. 
There you are. Let's see what <laughs> that really breeds a trading concept, right? Where you're like, oh, I want to go find this little piece because I get this chance again. It's this. I liked it. You know, I wasn't. I yeah. wasn't really convinced that it was going to be great at first, and then I ended up doing it and really enjoyed it. That one you got oh, to shoot. This one, does. it's a different. Oh, uh, that one's shimmering. Oh, cool. Shimmering. <laughs> okay, that one's shimmering. Okay, that's good, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, nice. So that's the Shatner one, and then I'm happy to rip open a pack of Titan, Shit. pack of Blockchain Heroes on here real quick, and if we get I, something cool, I'll give it away. I, I'll make you a okay. the best thing. All right. Uh, da, 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 hold on. Yes, yeah, somehow I missed the blockchain heroes. I I didn't see what time it was released, so by the time I came to it, it was already gone. So. <laughs> All right, so you guys can see this one. Um, I really love the artwork on this stuff. No, we don't see your screen yet. Uh, oh no! So if on on the top there should be a. Oh, I see. I see. It says What's share this? screen on the top. All right, hold on. So if you just move your cursor on the screen, there will be two, two or three things that come up on the top. Share screen is like the first or the second. Right. What What about now, now, still now? Uh, oh, yeah, it was there. No, we're still oh, you, seeing... you, you just got to double click on my... Oh, uh... oh this said, this said. Maybe it's my, my fault, sorry. There we go, there we go, there we go. Looking good. <laughs> All right. Perfect, perfect. Yes. Now you see one of these Titan packs rip. That's cool. I love the animations, hey. It's very <laughs> slick. I mean, it almost felt like I was opening up an actual pack. I mean, it tore the label, you know, open up the pack and took the car inside. I love it. Oh. Man, my whole browser is lagging hard. Hold on. Well, it might help if I was logged in. All right, give me a second here. Sure, sure, no problem. Evan, password, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This little gamification has really got me already, hey? So, this whole shard thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna totally go and find the rest of my the pieces to the cards that I've got. That's very cool. And the shards appear to be quite cheap, right? Yeah, the, the shards, shards of getting the shards are cheap. Um the cards, yeah. once you get a rare one, they can go pretty ballistic. Um hold on. All right, let me share my screen again now that I'm signed in. Uh, all right. Maybe. Yes. Open pick. All right. Opening your pick. Oh, I'll be too. Let's do it. All right. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, oh, whoa, we got a legendary there. Do you, see, you obviously know your cards because they all kind of look similar level to me. <laughs> this is like Max really Kaiser. <laughs> I think I just saw Max Kaiser go past. <laughs> all right, well, we got one that somebody's going to want for sure. Um, Super Stomp, legendary here. Um, or is this Mythic? I'll have to look real quick. Um, oh, that's uh, damn uh, legendary. <laughs> so, yeah, I wonder what this is going for on Atomic. Let's take a look. Um... Stomp, which one is it called? Stomp. Super Stomp Legendary. Let's see if we find oh, 32 bucks, 630 wax. Oh. Not shabby. Not bad. 
Okay, so let's uh, run this uh, wheel. So yeah, do the wheel. Right. Let, let me share the screen. Share screen, where is it? Share screen. And your screen. Even are you still here? Or did we lose you? Yeah. I think you lost them. Okay, so let me. Oh, wow. So let, let me see if I can. So maybe I think it was too many. Oh, even. So I think when we closed the browser, maybe I think we lost it. There, there is even. So let's uh, let me share the screen. Go for it. Mm -hmm. I think I put all the names here. Hopefully, so let's let's spin the wheel. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> Ron Jeremy. The first one is Matthew. Wow. Matthew. Wow. So let me write it down. So even you you have you are giving away one card, right? Yeah, send me the uh, the name, and I'll just send that over to him right now. So I'm going to do it three times then. So we are giving three. So the first one is Matthew. Okay, so next next one. There we go. So the next one is Ben. Ben. I've got to remove Ben. Okay, then we go. Third one. And third one is Matt. Oh, Matt. Matthew. <laughs> Matt. Last one. Last one. Okay, here we go. And it's Mike DeFi. Mike DeFi. Perfect. Well, I, 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 I think so, some of them didn't give the account name, but I'm going to collect all of this and send them to you. Uh, I'm going to send one name to you, uh, even, and then the three of us will send it later on. Well, I think we are past our time. Thank, thank, thank you for both of you. Thank you, Ivan. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you, Rob. Oh, thank you for having me. And any last Thanks, Evan. say, both of you? You, you can go first, Ivan. No, just uh, just thanks for having me. It's fun, and uh, I'll be sure to send that out. So, yeah, appreciate you having me on, and, and appreciate all you guys do for the community. Thank you, Ivan. How about you, Ross? Any last words? Uh, yeah, you saw me rocking my Rewired One shirt today. If anybody's interested in building on Wax, uh, the Rewired team are absolutely here to help bring your blockchain dreams to reality, um, specifically if you want to be building a business or uh, adapt. So please go to the rewired.one website and you can actually ask for a free 30 minute consult where you can get your idea validated before you even pursue anything. Cool. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone and see you all next time. Bye-bye. Cheers everyone. Bye. Yeah.